Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade exponential equation. So we have x to the power 1 over x equals square root of 2, and we're going to be finding the x values. I'll be presenting two approaches, and let's start with the first one. For my first approach, I'm going to write my equation as square root of 2 equals x to the power 1 over x, and then raise both sides to the power x. In this case, uh, we don't want x to be negative because that's going to cause some issues, and we don't want x to be 0 either. So x needs to be positive, and if we raise both sides to the power x, we get something like this, and the x cancels out here. So we end up with something simpler, square root of 2 to the power x equals x. Now this is nice because on the left hand side we do have an exponential equation, and on the right hand side we do have a linear function, and we want them to intersect and find the intersection point. How many intersection points can they have? First of all, exponential functions are pretty much always concave up. Now, that's my claim, and I will just prove it, of course. So let's go ahead and write this as f of x equals square root of 2 to the power x. And notice that uh, the base is greater than 1, so this function should also be increasing. But let's go ahead and prove that. I'm going to take the first derivative. If you have an exponential function to, 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 to differentiate it, uh, you basically write the same thing and multiply by ln of the base, which in this case should be square root of 2. I want you to notice one thing. Since square root of 2 is greater than 1, ln square root of 2 is going to be greater than ln 1, which is 0. So ln square root of 2 is a positive quantity. And square root of 2 to the power x for real x values also going to be positive, so the product is going to be positive, which indicates that f of x is always increasing. Great. Let's go ahead and differentiate it one more time, and we're going to get the second derivative. And we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to get the constant twice, so it'll just be squared. Uh-oh. So we're going to write ln square root of 2, and it'll be squared. And obviously, this is also going to be positive. And when the second derivative is positive on an interval for any function, you know, that's differentiable, obviously, we can say that f of x will be concave up. So f of x is always concave up. And I'll show you the graph of it, so you're going to see what that looks like. f of x is concave up. Great. What is that supposed to mean? So you have a function that's concave up, and you have a linear function. If they do intersect, either they're going to be tangent or there's going to be two intersection points. Okay, great. How do you find that intersection point? Let's go ahead and talk about that. Obviously, I know some folks are not going to like this method because it's going to be guess and check, but I'll show you something. We're trying to find the x value for which this is true. And I think we, we've seen this equation on different occasions like we had a tower of square root of 2's, and at the end we found a uh, finite answer. And it kind of comes up in that type of scenario too. Anyways, so notice that, notice that square root of 2 squared is equal to 2. I, I think everybody knows that, right? Hopefully. And from here we can safely say that x equals 2 is a solution to this equation because it satisfies it. So, yep, we got one solution. And our claim was that there should be two intersection points, so where is, where is the other one? We can actually generate the other solution from this one. So take this equation and square both sides. So I have square root of 2 squared. Don't simplify it. Square that again. And on the right-hand side, I have 2 squared. Now this gives us square root of 2 to the fourth power equals 2 squared, which is 4. But this is our equation, remember? So that tells us that x equals 4 is just another solution. Awesome. We got two solutions, and we're supposed to have two solutions, so we got it all, right? Great. Is that it? Yes. We'll, we'll take a look at the graph later on, but that should be all the solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second approach. Now, 
My second approach is going to deal with the equation directly. I have x to the power 1 over x equals square root of 2. And when you have x or any type function of x, a variable, in the exponent, it makes sense to get rid of the exponent because that's going to be kind of like a non-standard function. So let's ln both sides, right? ln both sides to get rid of the exponent. So if you do ln x to the power 1 over x, that didn't look very good. So we have ln x to the power 1 over x equals ln square root of 2. Now let's go ahead and use properties of logarithms. So we can go ahead and move this 1 over x here. That just becomes a coefficient. And square root of 2 can be written as 2 to the power 1 half. And at this point, you can easily say that, yes, x needs to be 2 because if x is equal to 2, this is going to work. But let's go ahead and, you know, simplify this a little bit more to make it nicer because we said we were going to get rid of the exponents. So here's what it looks like. 1 over x ln x equals 1 half ln 2. Awesome. Now we can write it as a quotient ln x over x equals ln 2 over 2. And obviously from here, it's not too hard to see that x equals 2 works. But we are supposed to find two solutions, so how do you find the other solution from this equation, right? Well, again, by manipulating the expression on the right-hand side, we can do the following. Write uh, ln 2, well, here's what we're going to do, not write it as multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2. So double both of them. So that gives you 2 ln 2 over 4. But 2 by using properties of logarithm, but this time it's backwards. We can write this as ln 2 squared, which is 4. So ln 4 divided by 4. And this comparison shows you, just like before, that x equals 4 works. Awesome. We got both of the solutions, and we were supposed to have two solutions, x equals 2 and x equals 4. And what was the original problem? It was x to the power of 1 over x equals square root of 2. Let's go ahead and quickly check uh, how the solutions work here. If x is equal to 2, you get 2 to the power 1 half. And obviously, 2 to the power 1 half is the same thing as square root of 2. No doubt about it, right? Well, if x is equal to 4, so this is for x equals 2. If x is equal to 4, then you get 4 to the power 1 fourth. But 4 to the power 1 fourth just means the fourth root of uh, 4 which can be written as the square root of the square root of 4. And from there, you can safely say that this is the same thing as square root of 2. Or you can approach it a little differently. 4 to the power 1 fourth can be written as 2 squared to the power 1 fourth. And now the rule says you're supposed to multiply 2 times 1 fourth, which gives you 2 to the power 2 fourths, which is the same as 2 to the power 1 half, which is the same as square root of 2. And again, our second solution works. And now let's see what the graph looks like. And that is going to conclude my presentation. Here we go. We have the graph of y equals x, and we have the graph of y equals square root of 2 to the power x, which is something we used uh, with the first method. And notice that these two graphs intersect at two points, 2 comma 2 and 4 comma 4. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.